Hey, hey, hey. Ooh, I apologize. The light balance is gonna be crazy with that curtain open. So let's close the curtain. <laughs> there we go. It's a little better. Oh, sorry, my laptop has weird things. So those of you who are watching on Instagram are gonna be like, what is she talking about? But if you watch this sucker on Facebook or on Vimeo afterwards, because I use the Facebook to go on Vimeo, then um, you're going to be like, oh, wow, why is she going in and out of the color? And yeah, the light balance, it's messed up. What is happening there? So it is Friday. These are live office hours, which are a little bit earlier than usual, because guess what? going away for the weekend so and we're leaving like we're leaving in like an hour and a half oh super excited so i apologize facebook that my flight balance is crazy sorry uh, yeah going away this weekend so that's why things are a little earlier than usual on friday on monday i will be coming to you live office hours from um ottawa ontario so i'll be uh, i'll be over there and be in a different place so get ready for that it's so exciting <laughs> on monday at nine same time though same time it'll be monday at nine because i will still be away so excited okay gonna calm it down gonna bring it in gonna focus right kelly i know yay we're getting away gonna mm -hmm. calm down bring it in gonna focus oh yeah i did unplug my phone so no interruptions on the phone what that's gonna be amazing no interruptions here we go um terrific welcome to live office hours mm -hmm. uh, my name is dr shannon Cooks. my pronouns are she they and i am coming to you live from north of toronto in ontario canada and these are the traditional lands of the haudenosaunee the anishinaabeweke the mississauga and the wendake niawetsio peoples and these were lands that were under originally under the william Street of 1923 treaties that, well, were completely unfair and wrong and were not honored even. Anyway, <laughs> good morning, Kathy. Good morning. All right. So here's something that happened to me, which is what um, sponsored or uh, made me think about doing this particular live and doing the subject on this particular live. I was at the the hump day happy hour paper journal paper club <laughs> with Heidi Moss, who uh, is if you're interested in some really deeper understanding of science uh, around singing and the neurology involved in singing and how the brain works and motor learning and motor skill acquisition around the around singing. Uh, she's someone definitely to check out. And what I'm loving, we've only had one, um, she has two two weekend long like things coming up, by the way. I couldn't go to them because they're both on weekends that are um, not working so well for me, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would be there with pants on. Uh, but so you can take a look at that. Heidi Moss, um, just, just Google Heidi Moss voice and she'll come up and then you can take a look at what she's offering. But this particular thing that she's doing is called, like I said, it's called, I'm just make sure I get it right, the Hump Day Happy Hour. <laughs> and what she's doing for this is she is curating papers. So I would love to be the person who, you know, the, the, the kind of person in my mind, I am the kind of person who reads journal papers all day long and who, you know, extracts the information and then like, you know, spreads it to the masses. <laughs> in my mind, I'm that person. I am not actually that person in real life. Not even close. No. I First of all, because um, I am intimidated by the amount, the sheer amount of research that's out there, first of all, right? And so where do I even find which papers do I know are going to be good papers. And of course, you can find, you know, if you're if you're um, looking at the Journal of Voice, for example, that's a peer reviewed journal, it's entirely likely that the papers that are in there are going to be 
good <laughs> by some metric. I mean, but anyway, there's a lot out there. And do I, am I the kind of person who's going to like really sit down and go through it? And, you know, no, I'm not that person. And that's okay. I've come to accept it. It's okay. I'm just that person, not that person. But Heidi Moss totally is. And not only is she the person who like goes through those journal papers and reads them like for fun, but she also has the scientific research background to be able to be really um, uh, critical in, in, the, in the positive sense of the word, to be critical about what she's reading. So she can actually say, oh yes, this is really good information. This was a well put together study. This, these are good, blah, blah, blah. She has the information, the background, the, the criteria to be able to, or, sorry, the, uh, the background to be able to use the right criteria to judge whether something is useful or not. So what I love about this this hump day happy hour <laughs> is that she chooses the paper and I know that if she's chosen it that it's probably a pretty good paper, right? And that the research is probably pretty solid. So she chooses it and then she goes through it with you and kind of talk talk it through. So that was on Wednesday night and all of the uh, I mean, it was just fabulous. It was so lovely. There's a smaller group of people and we just like got to talk and hang out and blah, blah, blah. And at the very beginning, she said something that I literally wrote down like almost immediately as soon as she said it because I hadn't really heard it in this way before. So she said, and as we know, social cohesion enhances learning. And I was like, wait, 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 what? what? I didn't say this out loud, but in my head, I was like, wait, what? We know this? <laughs> this is like science? We have research on this that social cohesion enhances learning because here's the thing um and the reason she kind of threw that out there is because she was doing some introductory kind of extra not exercises but like introductory kind of icebreaker kind of things um in order to bring the group kind of closer together so that we were having a you know having enhanced learning and um you know I've been working with cohorts now for since June 2020. So I've been working with cohorts now for what is that 18 months? I don't even I don't think it's fully 18 months yet, but I've been working with cohorts for for a while now. And and of course I've been teaching classes for a while um for quite a while and uh teaching large groups and uh, and of course I love working with master like I love working in master classes and in workshops and I love lecturing. I love I love being in large groups of people just me personally, I love that. But I also love the experience of like working with a large group of people. And with the cohorts, we keep, we continually have the feedback that the group dynamic was integral to my learning experience because I, I had the freedom, everybody was so supportive and people were, uh, we were all able to be vulnerable with each other about questions and things that we wanted to know more about and areas where we felt we didn't know as much and, you know, we might have been a little bit you know, we didn't maybe want to say that out loud, but then other people were saying it. So we were like, oh, me too. So there's this incredibly supportive atmosphere. And not only that, but I, uh, in, in some of the singing cohorts that I did where we had, where we weren't working on um, a specific skill. So for example, I have an upcoming practicum, which is on contemporary voice, where we're focusing specifically on working with and teaching contemporary and popular music singers. So that's starting next week and that's a cohort. But I also have done a few singing cohorts where we're all singing together. It's sort of like a group, um, you know, like a studio class. And in the studio class where everyone was singing together, uh, in the studio classes, sorry, we had um, master class type lessons where everyone, it was sort of open studio, everyone learned from each other. And also there was this aspect of sort of um, like supporting each other in terms of practicing and acquiring concepts and and always consistently through this whole time I have been doing this work in this way the feedback has always been you know that group dynamic was spectacular like I just felt like I learned so much from the group with the group the group dynamic blah 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 and you know I was like, so this seems to be a good thing. And intuitively for me, I love learning in a group. Uh, those of you who know um, Clifton's strengths will likely not be surprised to know that my number one strength is woo or winning others over. <laughs> 
so probably not a shock, which is, which is a strength that is like, you know, like, I just want to make friends with all the people. I just want to meet all the people. I just want all the people to, you know, feel included because I also have includer as one of my top strengths. Um, <laughs> so like, I just want, I just love to facilitate groups and, you know, uh, in the business things where they say like, if you have someone in your office who has woo in their top five strengths and woo is my number one strength, winning others over. Um, if you have someone in their office, in your office who has woo in their top five strengths, they should be like, the first person that a new client meets when they come into the office, they should be the first person, they should be, you know, the, the person who is facilitating all the group work, they should be the person, you know, because, because that in, in instinctively, intuitively, for me is the way that I love to work. It's the way that I'm built, right. And in some cases, you might call me an extrovert for sure, but it's actually a little deeper than that. Um, or, uh, you know, it's a little bit more, um, it's more subtle than just being an extrovert. It has a lot more to do with the fact, it has a lot to do with not only um, do I love groups of people, but I also love facilitating groups of people and bringing people together in groups. And, um, you know, like I said, includer is one of my top strengths as well. So all of these strengths come together to, you know, really help to facilitate groups. So a little part of me when people were saying, yeah, the cohorts were amazing. And we loved, you know, we loved the group aspect, a little part of me was like, well, that's probably because or has something to, to do with the fact that I'm really good at facilitating groups, right? So like, and I love to do it. So that might have that's probably why is because like, you know, I can do this kind of instinctively. So then, like I said, when Heidi was like, and we know that social cohesion enhances learning. I was like, ah, uh, okay, wait a minute. It's not just me. <laughs> it's not just me. I mean, how, how arrogant am I, right? <laughs> it's not just me. It has, it, there's actual science behind if we're able to create a form of social cohesion in a group, then as we're learning together, that actually enhances, increases the level and the quality of the learning. So there are a lot of caveats. So if you take a look at some of the research on this, which I did briefly, very, very briefly, but if you take a look at some of the research on this, there are a lot of caveats, right? There are certainly ways that uh, you know, how do we, first of all, how do we define social cohesion and social cohesion does not mean that everybody agrees, you know, it doesn't mean that we're all just going along to get along in a group. That's not what social cohesion means. Social cohesion has a lot more to do with from my very limited, um, reading, by the way, um, social cohesion has a lot more to do with everyone is in it for the group and for the good of everyone in the group. So we're in it together and we're, we're supporting each other in that group. Group, and not that we're all like just suppressing our, our um, feelings or whatever so that someone else can you know feel better it's not that it's not it's not it's hopefully the positive um, social cohesion form so once I kind of process through a little bit of that and the fact that social cohesion is this thing this real thing and not just something that I can generate <laughs> <laughs> not just something that I'm really good at doing. <laughs> I mean, I do it intuitively, but it's not just something that I'm good at doing. Once I process that, then I was like, okay, let's do a little bit of a, what are we, like 15 minutes in, let's get to the good stuff here. Um, where we're talking, I just wanted to kind of throw a few ideas out there. Now that I've made it clear that social cohesion is a great thing and something that we might want to consider if you aren't already. Um, and if you're someone like me, you may already intuitively be doing this in your studio. You may already be finding group um, uh, opportunities and you may already be facilitating those group opportunities really well. Um, but I wanted to just kind of make it explicit. Some of the things that I do intuitively and some of the things that I read about as well, I wanted to just make it explicit so that we could apply this in the studio and maybe enhance some learning in the studio, right? Okay, so we all know that there are lots of ways to create groups in the voice studio we and to create group experiences, right? So we often, often voice studios will have recitals. Um, often voice studios will have, uh, you know, uh, the whole studio will be involved in say a Nats audition or they'll be involved in local festivals or um, Ormta here in, in Ontario, the Ontario 
registered music teachers association uh so th where they'll have they'll have a small festival as well so often we'll have those kinds of experiences or we'll have um group classes in our oh gosh sorry <laughs> there we go Sorry, Instagram. Um, so, or we'll have group classes, um, or we'll have workshops for the group, or uh, lots of studios do, um, um, uh, what's it called, like, uh, you know, triple trios, or small choirs, or group singing, or small scenes in the, in the studio. Um, so they'll have different kinds of uh, opportunities for groups. Good morning, Allison. They'll have different opportunities for groups and for group interaction in the voice studio. So we, uh, many of us do this already just as part of our studio structure, you know? So it's not necessarily that we don't have those opportunities for group interaction. It's about what we do within that group interaction that allows for this, this, um, this social cohesion to come together, especially, for example, if we're working with a bunch of teens. So if you're working with a bunch of teens <laughs> and you put them all in a group together to do, say, a workshop or to do a master class or um, you run a, a, a performance class to prepare for a festival or something along those lines, um, um, just putting them in a group together isn't going to facilitate social cohesion. <laughs> they're all, unless you've got someone like me in the group. But if you don't have someone like me in the group, <laughs> there will likely not be any social cohesion in that group, just like naturally developing. So you've got to do, oh, I know, right, Allison? I know. But we can do group work online too, and I'll, I might throw a few ideas out about that. But So we've got to actually be intentional about developing that social cohesion. Just throwing us all into a group is not going to develop this um this this sense of working together toward the common good right this is not gonna it's not gonna work unless we do something intentional so here are some things some intentional things and let me make before i go there let me make a couple of suggestions for some other group work that maybe you haven't thought about before so it, in addition to recitals workshops master classes um uh performance classes uh all of those those sort of things that we that we often will find in a recital or in a studio sorry and recitals um, something that might might be uh, something that I, I know lots of uh, lot, lots something that I know of folks doing is having um, a monthly group class or maybe every six weeks a group class for the entire studio or for segments of the studio so one month we're doing a group class for um a group class for say all of anybody under 10 for example or for anybody you know 10 to 13 or 14 to 16 or whatever or all of the adults so you may divide it out in terms of the demographic if you wanted to something along those lines, but having something that is a monthly meeting together and we can do it online there. You, it is, you are able to do it online. And of course, as we start to move back into person, there's the opportunity to do this in person as well. But having this, having uh, something that is a, um, uh, not necessarily a workshop or a master class uh, or you know coming together to do a performance class, but something that is around learning something new about the voice or something that's maybe a health and hygiene class or something that is um you know where we watch uh, a musical together right so it's a group musical viewing um and then maybe we have a discussion or something afterwards something that is a little bit outside of the singing per se kind of group class thing i know uh several folks one of the teachers um who i know uh here in uh, in canada uh, Melody Thomas, she does group, uh, she arranges for, for the groups to go to see musicals um, in Toronto. So she's relatively close to Toronto. We have a fairly robust musical, um, fairly robust musical um, scene there, so, or concerts. So she arranges for group trips to um, uh, through the studio through and she does all the work on it she like buys the group tickets and all that stuff so she does a lot of work but anyway so there are my encouragement would be to do some some group things that are not necessarily like studio 
related. Maybe if you've got some singers in your studio who love, um, who are reading um, folks, you maybe want to, you might want to pull out, um, uh, you know, one of the breath books. You might want to pull out, um, I don't know, maybe a approach to voice or something that, you know, something that's related to singing or something that's related to uh, the voice or something that's related to who we are as people or as performers or, I mean, lots of different great study type books out there and start a book club. Anyway, lots of ideas for creating a group experience. And so now how do we facilitate that social cohesion? So the answer is relatively straightforward and again, completely intuitive to someone like me and, and, but perhaps not intuitive to other folks, which is why I'm, I want to kind of make this explicit. So one thing is we create, we think of, we uh, have uh, some icebreakers. <laughs> So I know this seems silly. However, the kind of icebreaker that I'm talking about here is really a, a uh, like age and stage appropriate kind of icebreaker. So one of the icebreakers, like Heidi always has an icebreaker in her classes. And one of the icebreakers that she had the other night was um, if you could learn a motor skill, because this is about learning, the, the group was about learning a motor skill. If you could learn any motor skill in five minutes, like download it like matrix style, what would you learn? That was very interesting, right? I chose salsa dancing, by the way, but some folks were like, I would learn my guitar, like I would learn how to play guitar, or, you know, what, what is that motor skill that I would learn? Well, I would learn this, this particular thing. So very interesting kind of, like, uh, um, uh, they can be subject related, but they don't have to be. And if you've got a kid, um, if you've got a group of children, for example, uh, something like, what is your favorite stuffy? Or, you know, obviously favorite color is possible too, but like favorite color might be a little bit boring, but what is your favorite, you know, a favorite thing? Or the ever favorite, what do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, <laughs> or what's your favorite kind of animal? Or blah, blah, blah. But something that is age appropriate, but related to um, and, and something that people can relate to, but also that gives us a chance. Uh, sorry, and there's also going to be like a little bit of a why in there too, right? So what's your what's your favorite um, animal and why? Why would and same with the motor learning skill. Why would you want to learn that particular motor skill in like five minutes, right? So there's a there's uh, there's the ability to have this um, connection, and you learn something about people without learning something about people. So we learn, however, you know, we, we create these um, engagements with the other people in the group, which starts to bring together that social cohesion. The other, the, the next thing to be explicit about is the, um, uh, the, uh, sorry, um, stating very clearly what your role is in in terms of facilitating and what everybody else's role is and being really clear about the fact that i'm here and or maybe we've got a guest speaker or we've got a workshop person coming in and they're going to do this this and this and here is our role our role is to engage together to um to contribute whenever we've got something interesting to say not even interesting i don't know if i would use interesting but to ask questions whenever something comes up and giving people the opportunity to ask questions so if you're on a zoom call throw your question in the chat with a big capital question so everybody you know so i can know that the question is coming in um or have notepads or have just good old-fashioned um hand raising, have questions in advance, having the, um, making it really clear that we're all together in this learning environment where it's very, um, uh, where everyone is going to be supportive, where it's not a, um, it's not a like, you know, who gets the answer the fastest. It's an, we're all together in a supportive, no one's going to ask a dumb question there's no you know so that uh, creating the rules around all of the people who are in the group and then the third thing to be explicit about is that we are all in this together so so again i am instinctively 
instinctively able, this is part of what I do as a person, instinctively able to sort of um, um, create this uh, atmosphere where folks feel pretty comfortable to ask questions. Um, uh, uh, part of that is because I'm a little bit self-deprecating where it's pretty clear that I don't know all the answers either. So there's, you know, there's a little bit of that self-deprecation. I mean, I'm Canadian, so of course I'm self-deprecating, but there's, there's that little bit of like, see what I just did there? I'm Canadian, so of course I'm self-deprecating, right? Like there's that little bit of that going on, but there's, I'm able to do that. But so if that isn't part of your intuitive way of working, that's fine too. Be explicit then, literally say out loud, we're all here asking questions. I'm asking questions just as much as everybody else is. And the whole goal of us being together in the group is so that we can learn from each other. And I'm so excited to be able to learn from everybody here. And I'm so excited to learn from, you know, whatever, whoever the speaker is, or if you have a speaker or whatever, if you don't have a speaker, terrific. I'm so excited to learn uh, from everybody here. I'm so excited to get to know everybody a little bit better. So we, you create this um, cohesion, uh, this social cohesion by drawing everyone in so that we all feel that there is a, um, uh, a support within the group system so that everyone is learning together so that we're all coming together into, uh, um, uh, so there's a group, um, uh, I'm trying not to say this, so it, I, I, like we don't want it to be culty, right? It's not culty. That's not what we're going for. But we're, we're all we're, we're working together for the common good. But the common good also means that we are all, um, uh, you know, it sounds so culty and maybe a little too socialistic, <laughs> maybe too much on the socialism side. But I mean this in the positive way, right? In the super positive way, where we're all each of us is allowed to be who we are. And in each of us being who we are in that group, we're all then supporting each other and coming together for the, the good of everyone in that group. So as a, and I mean, one of the, you know, a, a, a rising tide raises all ships or whatever that saying is, where as, as the whole group learns together, we all become more, I was gonna say better people. <laughs> Yes, Shannon, better people. We all become better people. No, but we all learn together. Okay. <laughs> I think I've talked myself into a corner. Oh, I don't need that. I don't, it, it, it's not culty. It's not what we want. We don't need it to be like in that sense. Okay, it's not what we want. But definitely in the sense of where we're supporting each other and where the the sense of us all being in it together means that we all learn in a deeper way or a more meaningful way. So that is something to consider. <laughs> it's just something to think about on the weekend. What are some of the things that you may already be doing in a group environment where you can create a more, uh, an even more supportive atmosphere, an even more, um, uh, you know, a, a way for folks to have an even uh, an even deeper learning experience because there's more cohesion in the group. And again, excuse me, cohesion does not mean that we all agree and necessarily and that we all think the same things and that we're all like, you know, and that people are, you know, uh, not allowed to say what what they you know feel right so like that's that's not what that means it means that there's a, a group working together so and supporting each other no matter what so um yes enhanced learning we know we know science now science says <laughs> there's research that shows that social cohesion enhances learning so let that kind of like sink in a little bit over the weekend if you didn't know that already explicitly. I mean, I did not know that explicitly. I had, I kind of intuitively thought that and I kind of thought, well, of course it does, uh, especially if I'm in the room, right? Like I can make everybody, ha you know, have a great time and learn better. But, um, but it's not just me. It's, it's the group dynamic. If we can create this group dynamic, um, that also then enhances everybody's learning. So. Have a little thought about that over the weekend and see if you have any ideas about ways that you can do a little bit more of the of this cohesion within the group. 
um, and a little bit more of the support that we can have for each other in the group um, in your in your uh, voice studio. So I hope that's useful. That was, that was a little bit of a uh, little bit of a um, what's it called uh, a build on something that I bet, sweet, I bet that Heidi Moss could say it even better than I just did, but you got me today. So <laughs> Heidi Moss. Uh, like I said, um, you know, I'm not really, uh, not really, you know, if, if, if you have some time and you're interested in working in, in the way that I was talking about with, um, with Heidi, check out her stuff because First of all, it's a really, really good deal for what you get. And also the amount of work that she puts in. Holy cow, it's really good work. Um, so it's a really good deal. And secondly, you're gonna learn so much smart, smart stuff. Oh my gosh, she's so smart. Okay, so a little love note to Heidi there. <laughs> Take good care, have a terrific weekend. Think about some ways that you can have, um, yeah, right, Allison, I know. And and it's not like any of us are, you know, hoping that we're going to be like, that everyone in our studio is never going to, you know, talk to each other. Like, there's, I don't think there's anyone out there who's who's not trying to build relationship in the studio, right? I think we're all, I think we are likely all trying to build relationship in the studio in one way or another, whether we're doing it explicitly or implicitly, right? Yeah, the technology makes it feels, feel distanced. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I know some folks who have done just a really terrific job of kind of negotiating that um, through the technology and, you know, finding ways to play games and that kind of thing through the technology. But yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, but like I said, I don't think anyone is, at, you know, saying, oh, I don't want there to be relationships in my studio. I don't want anybody to know each other in my studio, right? I don't think anybody's doing that. Um, but I do think that we're not always explicit about it, right? We're not always like recognizing what we're doing and then building on it because we're sort of like just thinking, okay, well, this is what we do. And then not realizing, like, like you said, not realizing that there's actual, there's, there's a good reason to do this. Everybody learns better if, if we have that cohesion in the, in the group. So it's good science. Love it. Okay. And I maybe even, <laughs> who knows, Heidi might see this and be like, no, Shannon, that's actually not the way that works. <laughs> You misinterpreted all of it. <laughs> That's entirely possible. Anyway, maybe I won't share this. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm pretty sure I read. I'm pretty sure I got it right <laughs> in many cases. Anyway, have a terrific, have a terrific week. I will see you on my weekend. Sorry, I will see you on Monday, nine o'clock for some live office hours. On Monday, I'm going to talk about, um, I do like to get a little bit more practical on Monday. So on Monday, I'm going to talk about, um, three exercises and how to use them um, using the straw. So we've had a little bit of like discussion in the last little while around straws and so I thought I would just just pull out three exercises that I use pretty regularly and that are really useful. So we'll do that. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>